welcome this is the bible journey thank you very much for joining us on this discussion today and uh, i hope that you'll be learning much as we analyze the book of exodus chapter 36 with me on set to help us in the analysis is uh, pastor peter nyaga welcome pastor thank you so much Latemo. and uh, we also have pastor dan abuya a welcome. pleasure being here thanks well, and uh, we also have pastor kabira wakabira welcome to our discussion today. appreciate and uh, would you mind leading us in a word of prayer pastor our dear lord all we ask is that you may stir our hearts so that when we come before you, that when we give you, when we come before the heart, before the tabernacle, before anything that you've asked of us, we will be able to be cheerful because this is what we want to do. Bless us as we discuss this chapter, for we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Now, pastors, uh, in chapter 36 starts with, uh, it's basically a continuation of chapter 35, uh, verse 1 says, and, uh, and uh, Bezalel the, and Aholiab and every gifted artisan in whom the Lord has put wisdom and understanding to know how to do all manner of work for the service of the sanctuary shall do according to all that the Lord has commanded. Basically, we remember w w uh, when you were on the mountain, God spoke to Moses and said, and be Behold, I've called by name mm. Bezalel and Aholiab, right. and I've put in them all the wisdom that is needed for this uh, sanctuary to be consecrated. Now Moses has also said in uh, chapter in, in chapter 35, uh, he also mentioned the same, and behold, the Lord has called Bezalel and Aholiab by name, and uh, he has put uh, wisdom in them to do this particular work. Now in 36, uh, now it mentions again the mm. same, same, people and uh, I, I don't know pastor uh, Dan what comes to mind when you read verse 1 specifically um, this is a very critical aspect of uh, the building of uh, the Lord's tabernacle mm. and um, not only here but even today uh, so this is a critical verse it is not just anybody who comes to build the tabernacle, a tabernacle for the Lord mm. Um, there is the Holy Spirit. You know, we read here that um, the Lord has put wisdom and understanding, and this is a repetition. Chapter 31, 1 to 11 also talks about the artisans and mm. the various um, experts who come, uh, who are called for the building. These are people whom the Spirit of the Lord had already been, uh, you know, promised. Mm. In other words, first there is inspiration before they come to build. This, uh, what we are told here, the wisdom and understanding, this is actually the spirit of the Lord. Because mm -hmm. uh, when we read uh, Isaiah, in Isaiah chapter 11, mm -hmm. Isaiah 11, Isaiah 11 uh, verse 2, he talks about uh, all these uh, attributes that mm. were needed in the various artisans, and you realize it is actually basically saying mm. the spirit of the Lord is upon them. Because, of course, he's speaking about Christ uh, himself, and he talks about the spirit of the Lord resting upon him, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge, of the fear of the Lord, and so on. And these are no different spirits. Basically, it's saying that the spirit of the Lord in all fullness will be upon him. Mm. So we are seeing here the Lord already empowering uh, men and women, because they mentioned also women also who had uh, this uh, spirit of cunning or of uh, expertise. Mm. So this is important as we go to work for the Lord. We want to get not only men who are excellent in their fields, but also men whose hearts are dedicated to the Lord, mm. who understand the meaning of the work they are doing. Not just as for commercial gain, but their heart is there. And wow. so they know that this is a holy work that I'm doing. Mm -hmm. right. and, and of course, the Lord had talked about them, uh, especially in uh, 35, in mm. verse 30. Uh, he said, and Moses said to the children of Israel, See, the Lord has called by name Bezalel, mm. the son of Uri, the right. son of Ha, mm. of the tribe of Judah. Then in verse 34. Verse 31, 31 uh, actually. Uh, and he has filled him with the spirit of God, of That's course, right, in yeah. wisdom and understanding, knowledge, and all manner of workmanship. Sure. And also the right. same, same about Holiab mm. in verse uh, 34. Right. And of course, what you're saying, very, very okay, that it's not just people who have wisdom or... Uh, who are gifted in that area, but they have to have the spirit of the Lord in them. Now, pa uh, again, Pastor Kabira, when you look at, uh, of course, in 35, Moses mentions to these people, the children of Israel, 
that the Lord requires this and this and that and that. And then in from verse 2 uh, all the way to verse 7, now it speaks about how people, in that is chapter 36, gave what they had until it was in excess. How mm -hmm. do you see that spirit? Uh, I will say, I think in the previous episode, mm. I almost said something. And I think uh, it just come here. The effectiveness of people giving is not in threats, is not in targets, but in being able to preach and talk to the people until their hearts are tired. Mm. The whole point is not to coerce. The whole point of church is not to set a target. It's not to mimic a particular verse. It's not, you know, I, I can just imagine how simple Moses' verse was. Maybe they saw the glory on his face. Maybe they saw the genuineness of him. Mm. Maybe they understood the concept better. But something, everyone got tired in such a way that we'll see, most of them, please, I'm begging you, stop. Because they still wanted wow. to give, you know. Right. You know, he's literally, he says, he <coughs> goes out and pleads to everyone in, uh, in, uh, in, verse, in verse 6 and 7. That it was so much, indeed, it ends by saying, indeed, too much. Mm -hmm. People were not saying, mm -hmm. I think now the church is full. I think that's enough. No. Because everybody would look at the giving vis-a-vis -vis what he's going to get. If the presence of the Lord will be in this temple, wow. I want right. to be able to be contributed. You know, you want your pride to be, I was there. I helped in God being among us. Mm. The pride was not in, I built it. The pride was in, if the Lord wants to be near me, mm. why would I say? So they basically give everything. But for me, allow me to take the angle of the effectiveness of the word. Of Moses. Mm. Of course, God was with them. These are people who've just been punished, including death by Levites. And the Lord says he plagued them. He gives uh, them plagues. That's where he ends. He immediately, God is so angry with them. They have drunk already. They are drinking a concussion of gold <laughs> dust and uh, a lot of things. Mm. So how much more can man, Moses, veiling himself because of the glory, how effective was he? And I'm thinking as a pastor, Am I that effective when I need funds for camp meeting? Right. When I need construction of the church? When I need something? How do I speak to people such that they give without having to do? We, I think we have an issue so far, uh, uh, let me say, especially mm -hmm. in our church, mm -hmm. where people give tithes more than the offerings. Why? Because people still look at God as... He may be angry, so let me be done with him. Mm. But offerings, actually they say offerings are usually 30% of the tithes and offering. Of the tithes, I mean. Right. So people feel compelled to give tithes more because they want to be done with God. You know, they don't want curses. You know, they still look at God as that fearful God. Right. But compare with the Israelites here. This was not tithe. This was offering right. free will mm. that it was even more than the tithe wow. itself. Mm. Right. Mm. And, and Pastor Nyaga, you, you are looking at this and uh, in verse uh, 6. You know, I, I long to see such a, to have such a, uh, such a moment when All the right. pastor will stand mm. on the pulpit and say, uh, and they caused it to be proclaimed throughout the camp saying, Later, let neither man nor woman do any more work for the offering of the <laughs> sanctuary. And the people were restrained from bringing. For the material they had, they had was sufficient for all the work to be done. Indeed, too much. Have you ever seen that? Mm -hmm. You've been in ministry for <laughs> the years you've been in the ministry. <laughs> right. And uh, you've always asked for tithes and offerings, camp meeting offering and all those things. Have you ever experienced this? And do you think you will ever? <laughs> well, that's a uh, nice question, Ratemu. Mm. Yes and no. I have few incidences, and I, 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 I attest to this very fact. When you have taught members why they need to give, they give so freely. Mm. So you've had it the within your congregation? Yes, yes, yes. Uh -huh. That's what I'm, what I'm talking about. Uh -huh. I, I can cite a few examples, mm -hmm. but perhaps it was very good for me to do that. Mm. But I, you know, normally we have the, the targets. Let, let me talk, especially when I'm talking about the, the car meetings. Mm. We have targets. Yeah. And you need to give this as a, as a church. 
Then we come, and uh, many times, uh, there even those who come and break down to the congregation, we have thousand members, so each member to give this. And I have said not once, yes. no. I have a target from the conference, but I don't talk about the target. But I teach members the reason why they need to give and how to give. And I have seen overwhelming response from membership. So I appreciate this. But also, I think, apart from Moses teaching free will giving, there is something to do with Moses that makes people actually give freely. Mm. That's strange. And uh, I, I, I am relating this uh, from verse number two. Mm -hmm. Then Moses called Bezalel and Aholiab and every gifted at son whose heart the Lord had put wisdom, every, uh, everyone whose heart was tired to come and do the work. And they received from Moses, verse number three, and they received from Moses all. I am underlining the word all. Mm -hmm. All the offering with the children of Israel and brought from the work. Now, the uprightness of the heart of Moses resonates so well with the giving of the membership. And also I see the uprightness of the heart of these experts, led by Bezalel. Mm -hmm. Remember mm -hmm. la la last time I said uh, the wisdom, the Bible says which God gave wisdom. Mm. Uh, you remember last time I said, it is whose heart feared the Lord. That's how God was able to identify them. Their hearts were upright with the Lord. And uh, you, you also want to appreciate when they are coming eh, to give the surplus back to Moses. That Mo and ask Moses, go and tell the children of Israel, it is enough, please. They, do, they didn't just come to say it is enough. They brought surplus to Moses. Mm. There's nowhere to yes. put this. Mm -hmm. So I'm seeing people who are very faithful. Let me tell you, Ratemo, the few years I've been in the ministry, when you have communicated the vision, it's very clear to the members. And then you, when you have shown them how to support your vision, and then when they know you are faithful, in all that they give to the house of God. Mm. They'll give so overwhelmingly. Many times we ask members to give, but we don't give an account of what they have given. Mm. Mm. So and we like have made our members money. actually have a mentality mm. that when we give, there are few people who benefit from what we give. But when members have been set to appreciate their giving, they will give until you say it is enough. Wow. And I have seen that in my ministry. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I attest to this one. Yeah, but uh, what Maybe I'm how common is it for you? Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah in no, no doubt, you know, we have, personally, I do have a few scattered instances. But generally, uh, I'd be honest, well, skeptical. it's not common. Mm -hmm. uh, and it's yeah. not common because yeah. uh, I, I think, Pastor, mm. we, we, we've also not been applying the biblical principles. Right, uh, I do we, agree. We have, uh, yeah. you know, uh, invented our own ways of, of I mean, what makes you think that I can only afford a thousand bob? To come and say, let's every man give a thousand bob. Right, yeah. Okay. So, mm -hmm. so, so the principles mm -hmm. here that we're getting also, it's, it's kind of like a rebuke puff to the leadership. Oh, yes. Mm -hmm. With yes. the spiritual leadership mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. also the membership. Oh, yes. yeah. Yeah. yeah, kind of. Right, mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. And so, of course, now this is the biblical blueprint. Mm. Yeah, and it's a challenge, you know, all the way down. Up yeah, uh, and uh, you know, he mentioned some, I think, was it three things? Uprightness, uh, communicating the vision. That's right, yeah. Yeah, which means you have the vision, you communicate it, and, uh, yeah, and then accountability. That's and, right. Uh, yeah, there's something else. So these are the things that we, you know, like I would say maybe milestones towards achieving what was this achieved kind of here. giving. Yeah, yeah. But in real sense, uh, church members are not just robots. Mm they can see what's happening. And sometimes, you know, people are, have got some sweet tongue. We've seen on media, where members of the clergy make people, make you buy into a vision so much until, you know, you, you basically give everything. Mm. But many of those who give, they give as a conditional statement, expecting something in return. Mm. Look at these people, 
their mind was not in a return. Mm. No, That's right. completely. That's they were giving. They gave. And you know, uh, what, uh, what verse 6 says, let neither man nor woman do any more work for, or for, uh, uh, for the offering. Mm. That is, even including even the women who are weaving. Mm. They were told, please, yes, your weaving is now. Yeah. You know, because we basically have, you know, mm. these are not people who are thinking of getting something in return. Mm. They're not thinking of, you know, like it's an investment. Many of us sometimes look at church issues as an investment. Mm. You know, the more I give, the more it will help here, the more it will help here. The whole idea of this was a willing heart, was not the outcome. Mm. Many of us are concerned with the outcome. Mm. And that's why you'll hear saying, I cannot give more, and uh, so and so is going to use this money. Mm. You know, uh, so and so. I'm just trying to imagine what if they did not even have accountability issues mm. with Moses. Mm. What if even they, they never knew Bezalel and Ahiliab? They never knew them. But that did not deter them because oh. those who wanted to give literally gave too much. When you tell somebody stop, that is not somebody who is thinking about anything, yes, about some somebody, outcome. Who, some, right. some outcome. Mm. No, it's somebody who is thinking of uh, a different uh, a different perspective, a different scenario. Mm. And so for me, I want to appreciate even uh, this kind, and this is what God is blessing. God is not blessing the amount. And that's what I've... It was not even about, you know, uh, I'm saying this because sometimes you look at the bigger amounts mm. rather than the smaller amounts mm. and the non-monetary, non-itemized things. Mm. Those who are weaving, those who are, uh, the, the, I mean, when we were doing chapter 20, I mean chapter 35, was talking about all the women who are gifted artisans, span yarn. That is not something you can give literally, mm. but hey. I may not have the Give blue, the red, and scarlet one. Mm. I may not have the blue, purple, scarlet, but at least I can weave. Yeah. And so they're just weaving. They had to be told, please, I, I think mm -hmm. it's now too much. And, and, and is it also a matter of spiritual growth for the church members, uh, the worshippers? Because I remember sometimes when I was still in campus, and uh, we would now have this discussion, you are a chaplain, right. you've spoken to the young people, and uh, we would ask ourselves, now, which amount do I type? Am I, uh, why am I tithing the loan? At the end of it, I'll be employed and I'll pay tithe from my salary. So should I tithe? We are having these questions then. Mm -hmm. Should I tithe my loan, which I'm given, of course, in the country of Kenya, the government gives a loan, which is called through the institution of uh, For health, your studies, yeah. higher education right. loans mm -hmm. board. So I get that loan. And then I have again to tithe it. And uh, maybe it's a minimum of 35,000 Kenyan shillings. Then <laughs> it's not enough to pay my, okay, it pays the fee. I'm not able to survive in the campus until I have to go and, and uh, you know, ask from parents. So is it a matter of also spiritual growth so that you understand, okay, I'm giving the tithe. Mm. I'll give the offering, which according to the Seventh-day Adventist Church is also 10%. According to the Bible. The Bible. Correct yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, sure. sure. <laughs> According to the Bible, again, yeah. 10, 10. So right. I give 20% at the end of the day. It's mm. about, is it about spiritual growth of a member? The, I'm glad you asked that question. Mm. Uh, what I wanted to add on top of well, these other preconditions is one critical aspect that we already mentioned here. It's revival, mm. reformation. Mm. You know, this, this, um, the congregation had gone through the lowest moment. Yeah, yeah. And mm. uh, that led them to a humiliation of hearts, a searching of their hearts. Remember us talking about uh, the old man Moses mm -hmm. leaving the camp and yeah. everybody is in yeah. silence. Mm. There is a hush in the camp. Uh, basically, people had come to a point of like, okay, you know what? Uh, it has been about God all along. It has never been about Moses. Mm -hmm. And now people even started following now Moses there. Mm. So there is an obvious change of heart at this particular moment, mm. you know, regardless of what led them there. And so also it's no surprise that there is this kind of mm -hmm. response. In mm. other words, uh, what, you're saying, worship, what you're saying again is uh -huh. uh, if this one came earlier, mm -hmm. uh, we, there is a high possibility that they wouldn't have given this much. Oh, the, they uh, hadn't been revived. Well, you know, without conjecturing, mm. you ca Somehow, there is, there is that like implication mm -hmm. there. Mm -hmm. So the point I'm saying is that true giving, you know, it follows true worship. Wow. Yeah. A true heart of worship will give truly. I've, I've, I've gone to a few churches. The common practice is that, you know, we do, we worship through giving before the word. Mm. But I've gone to a few churches who actually do 
worship after. through giving mm. after mm -hmm. the word has been delivered. Yeah. Okay. And so uh, I'm almost uh, biased towards that kind of mm. uh, aspect because the word means that you have received from the Lord, you have heard from the Lord, you have seen his vision that he has for you. Then now your heart is simply responding to mm. what you've heard from the Lord. Wow. Right. Pastor Nyaga, as you come in, of course, you know, like uh, the reason why we want to give before the sermon is mm -hmm. we know right after the sermon, people will like uh, just walk out. And of course, uh, you know, the common, they the common experience to worship. Yeah. And <laughs> so <laughs> we don't, we haven't learned you're that. Trapping that them, you know, yeah. You see yeah that we are just trapping, trapping them before them. they go. Yeah. And the, mo the common verse <laughs> that we read is right. always yeah. Malachi chapter 3, verse 9 and 10. And what we'll emphasize is. If you will not open, uh, okay, yeah, bring all the tithes into the storehouse that there may be food in my house and try me. Yeah, this is now the part that we, want, we really want to emphasize during tithes and offerings. And try me now in this, says the Lord of hosts, if I will not open the, uh, for you the windows of heaven and pour out for you such blessings that there will be not... Uh, be room enough to receive it. So we really want to emphasize them and s show them the benefit that they get after giving, but not the experience of we have to worship through giving. Pastor Kabira, uh, Pastor Nyaga. Uh, it's okay, well, Kabira and Nyaga, it's the same. Yeah. <laughs> 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 it's the same. <laughs> but, but, uh, but of course here, we are not talking about the tithe, we are talking about free will. Free will of offerings. Yes, yes, right. There's a huge yeah. difference. Mm. I think we will have more time to discuss the tithing when we proceed in the next, uh, the, the, the next book. Mm. But um, I'm looking at what the God will want us to get out of this. And I'm saying to the leadership, vision is key. Mm. Number one. Cast the vision clear to the mm. members. Mm. We need to know why we are giving, for what. Yes. If you are not able to cast your vision clear, don't expect members mm. to give. Number two, within your vision, let members know who is the, you know, the owner of this vision. Mm. Who, 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 who is the, the, the brain, you know, not the brain, but the brain behind this vision. Mm. You see, when you look at chapter that five, right? No, the, if you can just highlight, then you'll explain in the second segment. That is number two. Who is behind this vision? Yes, mm -hmm. and that's why I want to, to give verse number four of mm -hmm. chapter that five. Right? Mm -hmm. no, or should we do that after this short break uh, so that you can continue and highlight and you oh, know? Uh, fine, because I have about three or four points to make on, uh, on okay, this. Yeah. Okay, okay. Yeah, so we, we are taking a short break on the Bible journey. And remember, it's still the book of uh, Exodus, chapter 36. These people gave too much until Moses had to say, No, 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 stop. You have given too much. Now, let's work with what we have. We are coming back shortly. Welcome back to this uh, study. It's the Bible journey, the book of Exodus, chapter 36. And uh, people really gave their free will offering. We are even not talking about tithes. Like, uh, you know, when you read Malachi, it's basically about tithes and offerings. But just about offerings. They gave more than enough until Moses said, it's enough. Let's use what we have. Don't do anything more about the offering. And uh, of course, Pastor Nyaga was still emphasizing on some points. And point number one was uh, cast your vision clearly. Let the people understand why, why are we giving. Then point number two was about tell us 
the person behind this vision. Yes, yes, yes. yes. Uh, th 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 and now you. that we are in church, it must be God and not you as a and, pastor. And that's the point I'm bringing out. Mm. And I, I wanted to go to chapter 35 eh, mm -hmm. and verse number 4, where Moses is casting his vision. Okay? Mm. Chapter 5, verse number 4. And Moses spoke to all the congregation of the children of Israel, okay, mm -hmm. saying, this is a thing which the Lord commanded, saying, take from among you an offering to the to Lord. To the Lord. He's casting the vision. Mm. There's a big thing Not we need to do Moses. here. This is from the Lord. Mm. So he spoke to all the congregation that is communicating, the, casting the vision. Then he goes ahead to tell them whose vision is it. Mm. He says, it is not mine. You know, many times as leaders, we want to take the glory. I um, have joined this particular congregation. I know that pastor has been coming here. I come and I meet a lot of things need to be done. So, and I want to package my ministry so that members see it is me. Mm. Mm. So whatever they are doing is because of me. Yeah, so that that when they exit, they will be left saying, we hand a pastor here. Mm. Pastor Swen, so is very visionary. Mm. So when you, you remove God from the center of everything and you position yourself, you will use every kind of a sweet language to talk to members. But you see a lot of staggerings as members give. Mm. So point number two, let it be God be at the center. Yeah. Then number three, the integrity of the leadership is very, very important. And, and, and that is what we are saying. You know, Moses is a man of high integrity. Mm. He comes, he tells members, and even he walks with the members so faithfully to an extent of coming and telling them, you know, what you gave, God said, I didn't have this much, this much has come, please take them back. Mm. You can use them for other. That's, that's integrity. Mm. You see, I'm imagining a situation where we, the church members start giving. And there's an overwhelming giving. I don't know whether uh, leadership will go and say it is enough. Yeah, we say, okay, enough. Uh, we know we'll consult in a mm. committee. They have brought in a person. No, let's not say. Yeah. We can keep we can this keep one for next another time. assignment. Mm. You see? Yeah. That's, that's lack of integrity. Because when members come to know actually it was enough, but we continued to ask them to give, mm. then they, they see these people are not faithful. So integrity is very, very important. And, 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 and number three, uh, no, no, number four, number four yeah. you need to constantly, constantly work with members and allow members to know this is a part of their worship. Mm -hmm. So that you, you see the Bible Total member involvement, kind of? Th that's it, that's it, mm -hmm. that's it. Mm -hmm. And you know, when I look at this piece of um, scripture here, it is everyone being involved. Mm. It, it reminds me, uh, just as last year, when we were organizing uh, a TMI campaign in some place in Nyanza, and uh, we, knew we appealed to members. And, and, and I remember one day t telling members, we, we, I know you are blessed. And I know you as one member can do all can the things that you can everything. Yes, yeah. but that is not what God is calling us mm. to do. God wants every member to, to participate. participate. We willingly, willingly. Their hearts. What, what you have. Mm. We don't care how much you're going to bring, mm. but bring what you have. Mm. From Even your, your presence is yes. important. And, and I remember a lady who had gone for about four years without employment. She's in the congregation. She feels God and need to be part of this. Do you know what she did? Mm. She went back home. She prayed, Lord, I have to do something. And she discovered where she doesn't have any money. She had bought a lot of clothes for her children mm. who are grown. The, the oh. clothes are there. She took those clothes. She sold. Mm -hmm. And brought the proceeds. And brought the proceeds to the church. Wow, 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 wow. That's to me, so moving. I said, and she said, Pastor, this is all I've brought because this is what I've done. Mm -hmm. And I prayed with her. And within two weeks, mm -hmm. she was going for an interview. Wow. And, <laughs> and she today she's working. She got oh. the job <laughs> in one <laughs> of these big universities in this country. That's so impressive. The so Lord can bless. Oh, the Lord yeah. can bless. Mm. But the point I'm talking about here is also involve members mm. and let members know we don't come to church and support God's work because we have a lot. Mm. Whatever you have, and that's why you see that, that the list that Moses is giving, mm. including women who are able not to raise any money, but they can, you know, they, they can, can spin read, yeah. and do a few things. Given kind. Yes, so th when the congregation feels that what you are doing is a blessing God is going to give us, no one wants to be kept away from the blessing. Mm. Th they all fight to be blessed. Wow, wow. Pastor Kabira. I, I I'll just say it's the thought of it is what is beautiful for mm, me. Mm. I would love such kind of a working uh, a working environment 
where everybody is doing things willingly and acknowledging its wisdom from God. Mm -hmm. uh, by the time we get to verse 8 all the way, you'll be surprised it's the, the wordings is Moses building. Mm. That's all it reads. Mm -hmm. He says he did that, he did this, he did that, he did this, he did that. <laughs> but in real sense, Moses was didn't even do anything. Yeah. yeah. You know, that that's a funny thing. Mm. And nobody even had an issue, including me, until I read this is when I thought, oh, like, wait, Moses was doing what? Because it says, <laughs> he g you know, the Bible begins, <laughs> why then all the uh. gifted adsons among them who work mm. on the table made curtains. Then from verse 9, it begins by he, this, he, that. He, this, he, that. Mm. He, this, he, mm. And I actually thought for a time, the he here stands for God. That is what I thought. Mm. But <laughs> then in real sense, it's in reference to Moses. Right, yeah. And I'm surprised Moses. Moses did this. No, he didn't even. Yes, he did it. Mm. But that is how you can imagine when everybody is pulling in the same direction, mm. how beautiful it is. Wow, wow. There is nothing like uh, claiming for, you know, from here, we don't see Bezalel and Aholiab much later. It's like they did their work and just seeped out of, you know, mm -hmm. we've done our work, it's mm -hmm. over. The women did their work, go. Uh, the king who supplied this, this work and go. And then just reads, he, this, he, mm -hmm. that, he. Yeah. And okay. for me, I think that is, I would love that kind of a scenario where we're just working for God, by the way. Mm -hmm. We are not motivated by anything. Mm -hmm. I'm working for God. Whatever is written there, I really don't need that attention. You know, every time I go to a building and I see the subtitles in, this building was constructed, uh, put, dedicated by, by. Anda, uh, who laid the foundation mm -hmm. stone, and this, you know, it's like everybody has to be within that, uh, within, within that commemorative plaque just for, you know, for emphasis. Mm. Uh, in the university that I went to, there were steps for every person, you know, uh, every person will contribute a step, and that step had your name. Mm. or need you know, to show you contributed to a particular cause. So I'm, I'm here imagining, Lord, can I have that kind of a relationship in my church? Not for me. Even if somebody else will claim the glory, all I need is for the church to be accomplished. And we'll see it later, the, the tabernacle was magnificent mm. in all its plan and what. Mm. But then who is written? They dedicate to the Lord and say, Moses yeah. built a sanctuary, but mm. in real sense, Many there were a million people mm. who contributed just for this cause. Yeah. With not names, uh, not uh, with their names, not for the purpose of their names being recorded. We only have three people whose names are mentioned. Mm. From there on, we do not know about the rest. Mm. Of course, I will say it's input from everybody really mattered a lot. Anyway. Mm. And uh, of course, what we are now talking about to the viewer is now we are into the actual doing. Of yes, the work. That's right, what yeah. God has already indicated, this is what you shall do, this is what you shall do. Now we are doing it from verse 8 going forward. We, the materials are here from verse up to verse 7. They are here enough and now people are doing the actual work. So what Bezalel and Aholiab were told to do and the wisdom that God put in them. And of course Moses being the leader, that's why Pastor is saying he did is almost like a reference to Moses. Just because he, he was the leader and uh, you know it always comes back to the leader even in our society today where you, you do mm -hmm. some good work somewhere as a team like Hope Channel. Kenya goes somewhere or Hope Channel uh, as a whole team goes somewhere and uh, does a good work and then at the end of it all they call now we call the director for Hope Channel to come and speak now it's <laughs> about in as much as maybe he didn't do okay but he's the brain behind all that thing yeah and uh, now Pastor, maybe even the, the difference will be Moses Mm. does not just take the credit but yeah. even the blame remember how he was when they sinned he also fought for his children yeah that will be the now the difference with the leaders today who yeah, only will take the, 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 the good credit thing, that's right but <laughs> the blame they are like no, but here was moses doing everything uh, pastor, yeah. pastor dan well these are beautiful happening mm. here but i just want to pause and mm. I, I have my sad thoughts <laughs> go out to a few of the bystanders. You know, there are people who are not willing. They're like, ah, this uh, guy. They're not going uh, to make it. You know, I'm not going to give my gold. Let mm -hmm. me see what they're going to do. Mm -hmm. I'm just feeling for them. <laughs> now when they see Moses saying, okay, guys, it's it's enough. enough, enough. <laughs> you know, this is enough. Mm. Yeah? I, you know, my thoughts go out to them and uh, we still have such characters mm -hmm. yeah. uh, even even today sure. there are people who are convinced that i mean you if know they if don't they are not in, <laughs> if they if don't chip in you are headed nowhere mm. uh, you know god's work it is going to go forward 
with or without with you or without you mm. yes it doesn't matter how much you think you have got to offer mm. it is it, it's god's work in mm. fact he says even if all the men and women stand by mm -hmm. the stones huh? mm. they, somehow the work of god always moves, right. moves forward on. so how how i wish that uh, you can partake of, of the blessings you know when it comes the out can, <laughs> can you imagine all the the guilt uh, mm. feelings of guilt that uh, come by this brother who thought is such a big shot and nothing will happen without them <laughs> now it has happened mm. now every day you are going there and you're like uh, <laughs> by the way yeah why mm. did i why oh. did i yeah. mm. so i think the privilege of um, partnering with god it supersedes any kind of sacrifice that uh, you may think you're giving from your side and really, the, the, this privilege, we should take it with joy. Mm. It should be a joy serving God. It shouldn't be a burden at all. I know there were people stood by because there is a, a lot of emphasis on those who are willing to yes. give. So we know there were people who are not willing. Yes. Mm. yes. Right. And, and, and I think to add on what Pastor is bringing out, which is very, very important, actually. Mm. And we have those members in church. Many say, let's, let's wait and see. They are not going far. Mm. Right. But I've learned through experience the ministry that God is not dependent on human beings. He always has people that he's going to work with. But again now, uh, not also my thought goes out to the leaders there, as uh, Pastor Dan's thought went to the members out there, mm. that faith is, is, is important. When every leader has been challenged by God to you know, do something for him, I see Moses actually moved in faith. Because the fact that we are reading in verse number three, uh, that uh, the, the members continued bringing to him free offerings every morning, it means the time Moses was starting the actual construction, he had not received sufficient materials for construction. Mm -hmm. But he said, with what has come, man, let's start. That was faith. He believed that God is going to move his people to bring enough. You remember Jesus <laughs> spoke in the New Testament and said, you'll be a foolish person if you start building and you have not calculated the cost. Mm. If the building is going to stall, you'll be a loving stall. Mm -hmm. Faith informs Moses that the God that I've communicated about is going to move his people. And so because he is the one who has commanded that we put a sanctuary for him, and he's the one who has asked people to bring materials to construct the sanctuary. He is going to make a way. He says, man, we don't have enough materials, but let's start. Mm. And those who are willing to support the God's work, let's continue bringing. And so faith to me is very, very important. Many times people shy from taking up responsibilities, especially project in the house of God, because they think they don't have uh, sufficient uh, resources to do this. Mm. But if we know and we learn about faith, there is nothing whatsoever we shall not do. Um, because it says uh, test and you see. Mm -hmm, so mm -hmm. faith to me, my heart is going out for our leaders there. Let's serve the Lord in faith. We shall wow. make mountains more. Wow. Now I need to get your, your views generally on building, which we are talking about. Uh, no, the tabernacle. Yeah, the, t the tabernacle, right. mm. the right. building of the tabernacle. And you know, it's uh, something that we looked at and the way it was supposed to be built, of course, the, w the materials to be involved. And he's talking about right. uh, the mm. length of the curtains. He's talking about the loops of blue yarn mm. on the edge. Mm. He's uh, talking about the, the clasps of gold right. coupled with the curtains on, on, on one with the, with the clubs that it might be the one tabernacle. You know, uh, all these, like the way God instructed Moses and said, this is how you shall couple them three by three and one, mm. you know, all those things. What would you, how do you see this, uh, the, the building of the tabernacle? How is it and uh, is it still adhering to that principle of God, of course, that we have been talking about? Yeah, um, you know, one interesting thing I want to note uh, at this stage is um, this kind of reversal of the order now mm. of the way things are done. Mm -hmm. You know, initially we saw the command uh, as it is being given. Moses gets the instruction of the things which will yes. be there first of all. That's what he began with, you know, the ark of the testimony, the tape of showbread and um, the lampstand. Later on we also see other supplementary, the mm -hmm. ark of the, uh, rather the... Um, 
the altar, of incense, the love, and so on. But this time around, then the tabernacle. Mm. Yeah, yeah. But now, what it starts with is the, the tabernacle. The tabernacle itself. That's, that's right, yeah. Mm. So, so one, that's the one thing I want to note. And then number two now is the exactness with which it is done. Mm. And, uh, you know, I challenge my reader, you know, my viewer, you go back to chapter 26 and mm. see how it is explained vis-a-vis -vis how it is done exactly to the letter. So uh, I don't think we can overemphasize um, the importance of sticking to God's blueprint. Because it's God, and especially on matters pertaining him. Worship, we're talking about worship here. Mm, mm. So we cannot uh, purport to have some kind of superior view of God's work uh, or the way it should be done. I think we need the humility to understand we are human beings. We are living in a very prideful generation, a very arrogant generation where sometimes uh, it even scares. Sometimes there are even suggestions which almost imply that you almost know better than God mm -hmm. in worship. And that's a fearful thing to even think of. But people do it. People say, no, we could do it better this way. And so strange fires, strange buildings, strange clothing for the dress, strange days for worship. So I think uh, that is the, perhaps for me, most important principle that I get uh, from uh, you know, verse 8 uh, down to verse 38, as I read step by step the exactness with which the, um, the, the craftsmen uh, built, built the tabernacle. Yes. 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 Um, just on his point, mm -hmm. I was just reading one reader, and I want to acknowledge, and I maybe somehow agree with him, about the opposite, uh, uh, the right. opposite order. Right. Mm -hmm. God began with in, then out. Mm -hmm. All right. And then when they're building, mm. they're bringing out, they're beginning with out, mm. then in. Mm. Which, uh, when we were talking about that order, we talked about God being able to begin with inside our hearts. Because that is God. He mm. knows our heart. Mm. Now, this other one, uh, uh, there is an assumption, or rather, there is uh, uh, somebody was speaking, and I want to agree with it by extension by saying, men only begin from out. Number one, because it makes common sense. If we would uh, build the Ark of the Covenant and just leave it there, you know well, the disaster that would have happened. Mm -hmm. You know, you, we all know the Ark of the Covenant and right. the entire meaning of it. Right. Mm. It will be disastrous. So, of course, that's why they begin with the, the, the bigger tabernacle they begin with. Right. For, let's say, purposes of even uh, decency and order, you know, you don't begin with the pulpit, then put the, you know, that is common the, sense. Yeah. Mm -hmm. we, we, then the walls later. Then there is also other aspect uh, that I also loved about man sees outward. It's not a lie. Yeah. Man yeah. sees outward. Mm. And it's not a bad thing. Mm. That's why we will do our best to be clothed to decently. decently mm. Because mm. I, uh, like sa some young people joke around, say, no man walks with an x-ray machine to see what's inside the hand. Mm. I can only talk about <laughs> what is <laughs> <That's> outside. <true. laughs> yeah. You know, I can only, uh. I will judge you. Yes, I will honestly judge you by how you dress. If I see Pastor Nyaga and Pastor Dan, how they are dressed, I'll say, you know, so many times because I'm in a suit, somebody said, pastor. <laughs> and I'm thinking, how did you know? Then I'm thinking, oh, yeah, by the I All look right. like a pastor from the way I'm dressed. <laughs> yeah, you know, yeah. that thought. And so sometimes mm. we may take it for granted. You know, you may say, I can come in the way I want. After all, God looks at the heart. But what you're forgetting is even your outward appearance still communicates a lot. Your outward appearance determines what is inside. You cannot be in differently and out different. As much as you want to argue about circumstances, the Lord looks at the heart, yes. For me, my principle has been whenever somebody, for example, walks in church, no, I will not drive you away. Mm. Yes, I will not drive you away. But if you need to get the honest truth is the Lord looks at the heart, but the people look at the what? At the mm. body. Mm. So you better, if you do so not want see. to distract the entire church, then come in with uh, your outward appearance looking good. Don't come mm. in and say, I'm not distracting anyone. I'm here for God. But yes, you are within people. You cannot dress badly just because you, your heart is clean. Mm. You are in the midst of people in as much as you are in the midst of God also. Mm. So if you do not want to offend God, then also do not offend people. Yeah, and yeah. I think uh, what uh, is uh, seen outside displays what is on the inside. Most of yeah, the so times. Yeah. Yeah, I will just uh, mention a point on what you were saying then and move to something different. Mm. Maybe in two minutes. Yeah, uh, I, I think... Uh, mm. The reverse, gone communication from inside outside, mm. but they are moving actually from outside, outside inside. inside. Yeah. Uh, to say the ideal, 
God is not interested with outside. The outside is important. Mm. He's dealing with inside. The outside is to protect what is inside. Inside, yeah. So our bodies, if we use our body, I will take care of this body outside. It's important. Mm. But God is out for what the soul. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So if you don't take care of your outer part, the inner part will be affected. Mm. So I think to me that's wha what I'm learning here. Mm. Then uh, I am also looking at what Pastor Dan said. That what we are learning here so strongly is, as of course I mentioned about faith, but also obedience. Moses has been very much obedient to the word of God. Mm. He did not change the plan. Neither did he even change. You know, there are some particular names God gave. Mm. And there were names that were uh, an open check. People come, those who want to come and support the God's work. But there were specific names that God mentioned. Moses did not change those names. Mm. Uh, you know, many times, uh, Ratemo, God, God speaks names in the ministry. You say, I want Brother Ratemo to be in charge of Hope Channel Kenya. But the brethren sit. Okay, they say, nah. Mm. <laughs> Him we can come after two years. Let's give Pastor Dan first. But Moses didn't do that. The names that God mentioned, Moses worked with those names. He was very, very obedient. Mm. And I want to emphasize that point of obedience to what God has given. Leadership should be keen to obey the voice of God. It may not look popular, but, but let's obey the voice of God. Wow, thank you. Thank you very much. I, I hope there's a ban. Is there any burning thank issue? You. Okay, thank oh. you very much. And uh, of course, we want to thank you, uh, Via, for being with us on this discussion. It has been a nice one. I liked it. Uh, of course, we are not doing a text-by-text -text, uh, commentary. We are just looking at the whole picture, and uh, we leave the rest for you. If you have been going through the journey with us, you will come to understand that you, we leave out some bits which you have to really read on your own. And then, uh, of course, through the help of the Holy Spirit and through, uh, when you pray to God, he'll open the things for you. So we are just basically touching so that you can have that interest to dig deeper and study the word of God. Get other commentaries also and uh, you'll be helped. And, uh, of course, thank you very much for being with us on our discussion today. It has been a good study. The book of Exodus chapter 36. God bless you. See you next time in the next episode. Shangana, Dani, who you pepoyan, Kwa jina la 
lake watu wapata shida kwa jina lake mapepo yatoroka kwa jina lake wagonjwa wanapojwa kwa jina lake wengi wanaokoka jina la Yesu kweli ni suluhisho tena jina hilo kila wakati pepo tu lina shangaa ndani huyu pepo ya mti kwa jina lake watu wapata shida kwa jina lake mapepo yatoroka kwa jina lake wagonjwa wanaponywa kwa jina lake wengi wanaokoka jina la Yesu kweli ni suluhisho tanda jina hilo kila wakati jina la Yesu kweli ni suluhisho tanda jina hilo kila wakati
jina la Yesu kweli ni suluhisho taja jina hilo kila wakati jina la Yesu kweli ni suluhisho taja jina hilo kila wakati jina la Yesu kweli ni suluhisho taja jina hilo kila wakati jina la Yesu kweli ni suluhisho taja jina hilo kila wakati Safari ya kwenda Galilaya mawimbi yakaanza kuvuma baharini wanafunzi wa Yesu wakaja wana hofu Yesu mokozi amelala chomboni wana amka amka tunakufa wakamuamsha mokozi Yesu mara mokozi kaamuru utulivu mawimbi yakamti mokozi 